Continuing on with the electrolysis of molten electrolytes, we will do further examples of electrolysis uh, using molten electrolytes. Uh, so another example, let's do the electrolysis of uh, magnesium fluoride, molten magnesium fluoride, Mg F2, and it is molten, so the state would be liquid. So we're going to do the electrolysis of MgF2. Again I'll draw I'll draw an electrolysis uh, diagram in which uh, we'll have a beaker and in that beaker there'll be two electrodes uh, placed inside it. One would be cathode and the other would be anode. Here's a battery so the negative terminal of the battery is the cathode and that's the side where electrons where the battery is providing electrons so electrons are being pushed to this end and this side is called the cathode on the other hand this side the battery is pulling electrons away from this side so this side is the positively charged side it's called the anode so electrons are being pulled away towards the battery on this side this is the positive side whereas this one is the negative terminal cathode and anode now when you're doing electrolysis of molten magnesium fluoride there'll be two ions in molten magnesium fluoride one would be mg plus two it's in group two so the charge is plus two and the other one would be uh, fluorine which would be minus one since it's in group seven so the electrolysis of magnesium fluoride would contain uh, this, the, elect, uh, the, the electrolyte would contain Mg plus 2 ions and F minus 1 ions. Now the cathode which is, which is the negative terminal that is going to attract the positive ion and the positive ion in this case is Mg plus 2. So the cathode attracts Mg plus two ions and mg plus two ions are deficient uh, they have uh, two electrons are uh, have been removed so it's plus two so the battery is going to provide it with electrons mg plus two is going to get attracted to the electrons which are coming from the battery it's going to gain electrons at this terminal so plus two electrons and that would be and it's going to form a neutral magnesium metal and that metal would come out of the solution uh, on the other hand, at the anode, which is the positive terminal, that is going to attract the negative ion, and which in this case is flu the fluoride ion, F-1. So it's going to attract F-1. And F-1 has one extra electron. So F-1, when it gets over it, the battery is going to pull that electron away from it. So it's going to lose electrons. So F minus one goes to the anode and since it has one extra electron, it's going to lose one electron and it's going to form a neutral fluorine atom. But there's a problem over here and that problem is that fluorine never exists as a neutral atom. It's always diatomic. So there's, it's always going to be F2. So there should be two fluorine ions then that would be going over there and each fluorine ion loses one electron. So in total, they're going to lose two electrons. So that would be your equation at the anode. And lastly, we're going to write the overall equation, the overall reaction that's going to be happening in this uh, electrolysis and that would be So we're writing the overall reaction before we write the overall reaction we need to ensure that the number of electrons gained and the number of electrons lost are equal in this case two electrons are being gained and two electrons are being lost that's uh, because uh, we need to make sure that they're equal because the battery is going to provide the same number of electrons as it is going to take back so we start adding the left hand side and the right hand side so it's mg plus two plus this 2f minus 1 on the left hand side minus 2 electrons and plus 2 electrons are going to get cancelled out and we're going to have on the right hand side we will have we will have mg and we will have 
fluorine. These two were in aqua state. So Mg plus 2 and F minus 1 are in aqua state because they were part of the solution. Whereas Mg that is formed, that's a metal and that would be a solid, whereas fluorine would escape as a gas. So at uh, at if you if you try to observe what's going to happen is that uh, fluorine bubbles of gas are going to be produced at the anode and you're going to see a grayish metal deposit at the cathode. We're going to do another example of electrolysis of molten electrolytes and this time uh, we're going to do the electrolysis of molten Al2O3. We are going to draw an electrolysis uh, diagram. There's a, here's a beaker and the two inert electrodes which are placed inside the beaker and these inert electrodes are connected to the negative and positive terminals of the battery. Inert electrodes are made out of graphite or platinum. Uh, so uh, this side is the negative side, this is the cathode, this terminal is the cathode, whereas this side is the positive side, this is the anode and uh, electrons are going to be, the battery is going to push electrons from the negative side, electrons are going to be pushed and they would be taken back from the positive terminal. And in this uh, molten electrolyte, you're going to have two ions. Al2O3 has Al plus three ions and oxygen, which is in group six, it has a charge of minus two ions. So you'll have Al plus three and O minus two ions in this molten electrolyte. Now, uh, if we uh, write the reaction at cathode, the cathode is the negative term and it's going to attract It's going to attract Al plus 3 to it. And Al plus 3 is going to gain the electrons that are coming from the battery. Al plus 3 is going to gain 3 electrons exactly. And it's going to form aluminium metal. So the molten aluminium ion is going to get converted into aluminium metal. On the other hand, at the anode side, the anode, which is the positive terminal, attracts the negative ion, which in this case is O minus 2. And the anode is going to, the battery is going to uh, take away electrons from the anode. So O minus 2 is going to go over there and it is going to lose two electrons because it has two extra electrons and it's going to form. A neutral oxygen atom. Now there's a problem that oxygen is a diatomic gas. Oxygen never exists as a single atom so it's going to be O2. To form O2 you would need two oxygen minus two ions and since one is losing two electrons two are going to lose a total of four electrons. So these are your, are your two equations at cathode and at anode. And finally we're going to write the overall equation for the reaction. Now writing the overall equation requires uh, you to balance the number of electrons gained and lost because the amount of electrons that the battery is providing is the same number of electrons are being taken back by the battery. So uh, I've already balanced this equation. I multiplied the first equation by 4. Uh, if I multiply the entire equation by 4, I'll have, I'll multiply these 3 electrons by 4 as well and I'll get 12 electrons. Similarly, I have multiplied the lower equation by 3. If I multiply the entire equation by 3, the I had 4 electrons previously and if they, they are multiplied by 3, that would give me 12 electrons. So 12 electrons are being gained and 12 electrons are being lost. Now I can write the overall equation, which in this case would be, it would be 4 Al plus 3. The 12 electrons gained and the 12 electrons lost are have all been cancelled out. Then I'll have uh, 6 O minus 2 ions and that would produce 4 Al and 3 O2 molecules and that's my overall equation.